Welcome students. Today we are going to learn chapter 14 statistic and the topic of this chapter we are going to take today is median. In our previous sessions we have learned how to present data in different tabular forms. Meaning of arithmetic mean and mode. Then how to calculate arithmetic mean for different sets of data using three different methods that is direct method, assumed mean method and step deviation method. We also learn to calculate mode using the formula mode is equal to L plus F1 minus F0 upon 2 F1 minus F0 minus F2 into H. In today's session, we will see what is the meaning of median and how to calculate median for different sets of data. Median is a measure of central tendency which gives the value of the middlemost observation in the data. To understand its meaning, let us take an example of ungrouped data. Example is marks out of 50 obtained by 9 students in a test are given to you, represented by XIs. Now to explain the meaning, the teacher gave to each student a slip on which marks of that student were written. So, slips were given to each student. You can imagine these bars are actually our students. So, the teacher then asked the students to arrange themselves in ascending order of their marks. The students did the same. They arranged themselves in ascending order of their marks. Now, the teacher wants to find the middle student, the student standing exactly in the middle of these, this line. So, what she did? She started leaving one student from both the sides. One student this side, one, then second student, third, fourth and then she got the student standing just in the middle of the row. What are the marks of this middle student? 18. So, she explained to the students that the fifth child is standing in the middle of the row and the marks obtained by this fifth child, fifth student is actually the median because it is dividing the whole distribution into two halves. You can see that half of the students are having marks less than 18 and rest half of the students have marks more than 18. So, when our number of observations are odd as 9 in this case, how to find the median, the middlemost observation? It will be n plus 1 by 2, that is 9 plus 1 by 2, that is fifth observation will be our median. So, you can see that in this case we got the median as 18. Let us see another situation. Now, instead of having 9 students, we have 10 students who have given the test. Marks are there in front of you. Again, the teacher asked all the students to stand in ascending order of their marks and they did the same. Now, again, the teacher left equal number of students at both the ends. One. 2, 3 and 4. Now you can see there are 2 students standing in the middle. So, the median will be a number just in the middle of these 2 students that is marks. How to find out? That we can find out by taking mean of 18 and 22. That means we will take mean of two middlemost observations. So, when the number of observations are even, median is mean of n by 2th and n by 2 plus 1th observation. 
where n is total number of observations. So, in this case we got fifth and sixth of observation which are 18 and 22. So, we took mean of 18 and 22 which turns out to be 20 and you can see that there are 5 that is half of the students are below are scoring marks less than 20 and rest half of the students are scoring marks more than 20. So, again you can see that median has divided the whole distribution into two halves. Let us see case of discrete frequency distribution. We are taking an example. Find the median of following data which gives the marks out of 50 obtained by 100 students in a test. You have excise that is marks obtained by students. Then number of students frequency FIs. It says that there are 6 students who have scored 20 marks. There are 28 students who have scored 29 marks and so on. What was our first step to find out the median? Of course, to arrange the data in ascending order of marks. So, you can see that lowest marks are 20, then the next is 25, then 28 and 29 and so on. So, we are going to first arrange the marks in ascending order. So, we will write there are 6 students scoring 20 marks, 20 students scoring 25 marks, 24 students scoring 28 marks and so on. After arranging the data in ascending order, we find the middlemost observation. There are total 100 observation. So, the middle observation will be 100 by 2 that is 50th observation and the next that is 51st observation. After arranging the data, how to find out what are the marks of 50th and 51st student? For that, we have to form cumulative frequency distribution table. How to do that? Let us see. Here, you can see that there are 6 students who have scored marks up to 20. How many students have scored marks up to 25? these 6 students as well as these 20 students. So, total of 20 plus 6 that is 26 students have scored marks up to 25. Then how many students have scored marks up to 28? Then 26 plus 24 that is total 50 students have scored marks up to 28. So, we can calculate the same way cumulative frequency for all the rows. Remember that the last cumulative frequency should be equal to total number of observations that is 100 in this case. Now, to calculate median what we will do? We will look at the table. We have in this table we have written the marks that is x i's, f i's, number of students, and cumulative frequency. Now, this cumulative frequency shows that all the students have arranged themselves in ascending order of their marks. But how to find out what are the marks of our middle student? That is 51st student and 50th student. So, let us see this cumulative frequency table. It says there are 26 students who have scored marks up to 25. 27th to 50th student belong to this row. So, what will be the marks of 50th student? It will be 28. Then 51st to 78th student belongs to this row. So, what will be the marks of 51st student? 29. What we do? We take mean of these two marks. That is marks of 50th student and 51st student. So, the mean will be 28 plus 29 upon 2. That is 28.5. You can see that our median is 28.5. So, 
half of the students have scored marks less than 28.5 and rest half of the students have scored marks more than 28.5. So I hope you have understood the meaning of median. Now let us see a case of grouped frequency distribution. The question is find the median of following data which gives the marks out of 100 obtained by 53 students. The data is given in the form of grouped frequency distribution. Let us see how we can find out median in such cases. You are given that from 0 to 10 marks are obtained by 5 students. Remember that here 10 is excluded but 0 is included. In second class interval we are given that there are 3 students who have scored marks from 10 to 20. Here 10 is included but 20 is excluded. So a student scoring marks 10 will be included in second class interval. So this way the data is given to you. Total number of students are 53. Let us see how we do such questions. First you can see that data that is marks already arranged in ascending order. So we need not to do that step. So to find out the middlemost observation we first form less than type cumulative frequency distribution table. For that how we do it let us look at this image. You have 5 students scoring marks from 0 to 10. If I ask you how many students have scored marks less than 10? So what will be your answer? 5. Then how many students have scored marks less than 20? Then you can see that the number of students scoring marks less than 20 includes all the students who have scored marks from 0 to 10 as well as the number of students who have scored marks from 0 to 20. So the total will be 5 plus 3 that is 8 students. There are 8 students who have scored marks less than 20. Then how many students are there who have scored marks less than 30? It will include these 8 students as well as these 4 students. So the total will be 8 plus 4 that is 12 students who have scored marks less than 30. So we can form this less than type cumulative frequency distribution table using the same method. Students you must be wondering why I am writing less than 10 and not writing less than or equal to 10 because remember we have discussed that in first class interval 10 is excluded. So the number of students that is 5 are those students who have scored marks less than 10. So the cumulative frequency of this class interval 0 to 10 will be 5. The cumulative frequency of second class interval that is 10 to 20 will be 8 and so on. Now we are going to write in our table the class intervals, frequencies and cumulative frequencies to do the question further. So here you can see class intervals, frequencies and cumulative frequencies. Now as here the students are already arranged in ascending order of their marks, what is our next step? to find the middlemost student or middlemost observation. As here the total number of students are 53 in the middle we need to find that what is half of 53. So 53 by 2 that, that is 26.5. We need to see where does this 26.5 lie. Because in grouped frequency distribution table it is not possible for us to directly find out the median just by looking at the cumulative frequency. Because in this case the middlemost observation that is the median lies somewhere in a class interval. 
and to find that exact value we need to do two steps. First, we take half of the total number of observation which is 26.5 here. Then we are going to find where does this 26.5 lie. So, here you can see that in this row 23rd to 29th student belongs to this row. So, 26.5th observation will belong to this row. So, this will be the median class. We call it median class and to find the exact value of median which must lie somewhere between 60 and 70, we use the formula which is L plus n by 2 minus C f upon f into h. Let us see what is the meaning of these symbols. Here L is the lower limit of median class which is 60 in this case. N is total number of observations which is 53. Then C f Remember, notice it carefully, CF is cumulative frequency of class preceding to median class. So, it is 22. Then F is frequency of median class which is 7 and H is class size which can be calculated by taking upper limit minus lower limit. So, 70 minus 60 that is 10. So, when we substitute these values in our formula, we get 60 plus 53 by 2 minus 22 upon 7 into 10. When you calculate this, you get 60 plus 6.4 and finally, median turns out to be 66.4. Again, you can see that there are half number of students which have marks less than 66.4 and half of the students have marks more than 66.4. So, this median has divided the whole distribution into two halves. So, students in this chapter, we learn about three measures of central tendency, mean, mode and median. We have an empirical relationship among these three measures. The relation is that 3 times median is equal to mode plus 2 times mean. So, suppose you know any two of these measures, value of any two of these measures is known to you. Then you can always calculate the third measure using this formula. Students, you may come across a question where instead of giving the class intervals, you are given either less than type cumulative frequency table or more than type cumulative frequency table. So, I have taken an example in which less than type frequency uh, distribution table is given to you. The question is, a life insurance agent found the following data for the distribution of ages of 100 policy holders. Calculate the median age. If policies are given only to persons having age 18 years onwards, but less than 60 years. So, you are given there are two policy holders below the age of 20 and you can see that be below the age of 18, there must not be any policy holder. Then there are six policy holders below the age of 25. You can see cumulative frequency distribution is given to you. To form the class intervals, so as there cannot be any policy holder below the age of 18 and there are two policy holders below the age of 20, so how many policy holders are there from 18 to 20? There are two such policy holders. Then below the age of 25, there are six policy holders. How many policy holders are from 20 to 25? 6 minus 2, that is 4. Then how many policy holders are from 25 to 30? 24 minus 6, that is 18. So, we have formed the class intervals and the frequencies from using this image. You can see that 
the total number of observations that is sum of all the frequencies 2 plus 4 plus 18 plus 21 plus 33 plus 11 plus 3 plus 6 plus 2 turns out to be 100. So, in our final table we will take the class intervals, frequencies and cumulative frequencies. What is the next step? To find out the middlemost observation. As there are total 100 observations, we are going to find where does 50th observation and 51st observation lie. You can see that it must lie in this row. So, this is our median class. You know the formula for median, it is L plus N by 2 minus C F by F into H. By substituting values of different symbols, you can calculate the median which turns out to be 35.76. So, half of the data lies below 35.76 and rest half lies above 35.76. Let us take another question in which the class intervals given to you are not continuous. I will explain how to convert these class intervals into continuous class intervals. So, your question is the lengths of 40 leaves of a plant are measured correct to the nearest millimeter and the data is represented in the following table. You are given that there are 3 leaves which have length from 118 to 126 millimeter. There are 5 leaves having length 127 millimeter to 135 millimeter and so on. You can see that upper class limit and lower upper class limit of first class interval and lower class limit of second class interval has a gap of 1 unit. So, this these class intervals are not continuous. To convert them into continuous class intervals, what we do? We take the gap which is 1 in this case, then take half of it, half of 1 will be 0 0.5. Then we are going to subtract 0 0.5 from lower limit of each class interval and we are going to add 0 0.5 into upper limit of each class interval. So, what we get? 0, 118 minus 0.5 gives us 117.5, 126 plus 0 0.5 gives us 126.5. Then for class, second class interval, 127 minus 0 0.5 gives us 126.5, 135 plus 0 0.5 gives us 135.5 and so on. Now, you can see that all the class intervals are continuous. So, I have explained the initial steps of this question to you. Now, you can follow the same steps we have done in this session to find out median in this case. Your second question for the assignment is a survey regarding the heights in centimeter of 51 girls of class 10 of a school was conducted and the following data was obtained. Find the median. So, here you are given the heights and number of girls and you have to find out the median height. Students, in today's session we learn that how to find out median for ungrouped data. First we arrange the data, then if n is odd that is total number of observations are odd then the median is n plus 1 by 2th observation. If n is even, then median is mean of n by 2th and n by 2 plus 1th observation. Then for discrete frequency distribution, how to find out median? First arrange the data in either ascending order or in descending order, then form cumulative frequency distribution table. You can form either less than type or greater than type. Then find the middlemost observation as we have done in this case. Then the third case was grouped frequency distribution where we first find median class and then we use the formula median is equal to L plus N by 2 minus C F upon F into H. Symbols have their usual meaning as we have seen before. 
We have also seen the empirical relationship among three measures of central tendency, mean, mode and median. The relationship is 3 times median is equal to mode plus 2 times mean. Students, I hope you have understood the meaning of median and how to calculate it for different sets of data. I hope this session will prove to be useful to you. Thank you.